Hi and welcome to another edition of Onside SA. And Budge, we've got 20 left in the last one standing. Yeah, Paul, they've had the week off, so uh, let's see what happens. Plenty of time to study, no excuses, Paul. So, so it's not this weekend, it's next again. Following game. weekend for the 20 finalists. And then mm. our last competition for the season will start again next so week. On the yeah. third, eh? Yeah. Just to look at the last uh, 20 that are left, and we've been tipping you all along. Sean Matthew, that the surname, has got three still. Sean Singleton, the guy I tipped to win it, has got two. The only woman left, Raquel Quintus, has got one. Sean Phillips, the reigning champ, is still in. And uh, it looks interesting. There's only 20 left. There's yeah. seven there, just in those four people. Yeah. Well, what's strange, this is the most number of people we've had going into, like, round eight. This, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, there's 15, was it uh, 18, was it, well, work about 15 people still, got, still going. So, uh, so it comes the hard week now when you can't take the big ones. And yeah. uh, the bottom teams are fighting for survival. Well, there's, there's one crucial draws. game, but, uh, you know, it was okay. very tough, Paul. Right, let's uh, get our friend Stevie B from uh, UK on the line. Steve, are you there? I am. Good morning. Morning, morning Steve. Steve. How are you? Very well, thank you. All Steve, right. uh, we spoke probably before we went on air. I watched the whole Turkey-Netherlands game. Is it Frank De Boer or Ronald De Boer? He seems to be a nightmare of a manager. I saw yeah, his record. It was a shock first half. I yeah. watched it, and uh, you know, and three 0 and, and again with about fifteen minutes to go, still three 0 You thought, well, I mean, Holland. You know, they put up a, a bit of a fight the mm. second half, but then got sort of caught at the end. So, you know, that is a shock. Yeah. Uh, you know, they've got some big names, Holland. You know, one or two older players, but you, know, you wouldn't you wouldn't have predicted that beforehand. Yeah. The thing that was strange to me is Tim Krul, who's now playing for, he's in goal for Norwich. Had a good season. Yeah. He was nowhere for a couple of those goals. They had Sillison, and also the other guy that played in the World Cup final here on the bench. I can't believe he played. Yeah. Well. Uh, uh, they 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 haven't quite got the the strength in depth as they used to. And, yeah. uh, you know, Stecklenburg is uh, is hardly playing at all much at the That's moment. That's the guy thinking. Uh, you know, Tim. But Tim Krul, you know, he, he, you know, he's a decent goalkeeper, and uh, yeah, you know, maybe sort of playing in the championship is not quite the level he should be if he's playing internationally. Yeah. Steve, changing uh, course. Uh, Champions League, we had the draw. You know, Man City drew Dortmund. Bayern Munich, PSG, Real Madrid, Liverpool, and Porto, Chelsea. How do you see yeah, it I, going well, from think, the top half of the group? Do you see Man City, Bayern semi-final? Uh, I, I would think that's probably the favourite. And in all honesty, you know that's probably. Uh, I think a lot of people thought that would have been could have been the final. So I personally think the winner of the competition will come from 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 that that half. Yeah. But uh, and it could be interesting to see how City do because. They have struggled in the Champions League, you know, and I know that Pep made no secret of the fact, and the owners, you know, they, they, it's the one competition they haven't won, and they, they keep getting sort of found out. So, you know, Dortmund won't be easy, but I think City, the way they've been playing, they should be too strong for them. As long as they keep Haaland under check if they can, mm. um, they should be too strong. Other than, I mean, Bayern, PSG, you know, I'm, I'm expecting Bayern, I think, will go through, but that won't be easy. Yeah, no, PSG, uh, not a bad side, game. Steve. Got, yeah. If they got a full team, they got a fair side. Now, yeah, all my Liverpool... The other half of the draw, I think Chelsea will be very pleased. Yeah. You know, I guess, uh, even though Porto have played well and they did well against Juventus, I think that, uh, you know, if anyone thought, well, who, who, which team would we rather play? I think uh, Chelsea have, uh, have got a good draw. Mm. And then Liverpool-Madrid, I mean, that's uh, obviously rerun of the final from a few years ago. Uh, that could go either way, really. I mean, yeah. Liverpool have got a... I hope that none of their big big names get injured. They can't afford to lose any more, and, and see how they do. Because um, you know Madrid, as we know, you know not not doing as well as they should in La Liga, but certainly in Europe, they they know how to how to play. All right, Steve, if I had to ask you for the call, what's your final? Man uh, I, I I'd love to say Man City. Um, you know, my, my heart says Man City, but my head probably says Bayern against Chelsea. Bayern, Chelsea, you a see, repeat of the see. final where Chelsea won in uh, Munich. Yeah. So you okay, see the yeah. betting, Steve, I don't know if you know the betting, the betting's out. 22 to 10, Man City, 7 to 2, Bayern Munich. Chelsea, 48 to 10, I don't, don't know why not, 5 to 1. Liverpool, yeah. 58 to 10, should be 6 to 1. PSG, 75 to 10. And Real Madrid, uh, the long shots, eh? 10 to 1. Yeah. Well, as I say, that bottom half of the draw... Um, you know, you know. I mean, Liverpool are obviously not going to think they're out of it. You know, mm. they can get through Madrid. 
you know, they'll fancy their chances. But I, I just think Bayern have just been so strong, so strong in Europe. I'd love to see City go through. You know, it will be uh, there'll be a cracking game. Yeah. Um, you know, but just just the way that uh, Bayern play, and they just seem to get stronger as the season goes on. Yeah, yeah, they do, sure. Steve, on to the T-Room Cup, as we call it here, the Europa League. Man United yeah. got a decent draw against uh, Granada. In yeah. the semi-finals, yeah. they got the winners of AX or Roma. That won't be easy. No, I, th- I think, personally, I think the winner of the competition will come from uh, that half of the draw. Uh, okay. It's a shame, you know, that they... they I thought that uh, something like sort of United-Roma or United-Ajax again would have been a good final. United had a, had a tremendous win in, in Rome, I mean, in... in um, in Milan, yeah. I mean that that second half performance when Pogba came on, he just changed the game, and it was a big win. I mean, I think they were under a lot of pressure, so I, I, I think it's going to be between uh, United and Roma and Ajax. Yeah, okay. Can you believe it that uh, Arsenal sacked Unai Emery? He's gone to Villarreal, and he was a king of Sevilla when they won three in a row. Could you imagine Arsenal Villarreal semi final? Yeah, I mean that would be uh, interesting, wouldn't it? I mean. Uh, no love lost, I think. But yeah. uh, look, Arsenal again, you know, straight through uh, disappointing performance last week, having sort of won convincingly uh, in Greece, lost again to Olympiacos at home. You just don't know what you're going to get with Arsenal. So, you know, if they if they take it seriously, they they have to play their strongest team. Yeah, you, know, uh, you can't you can't rest rotate players at this stage of the competition. Yeah, it's true. Steve, I see there's a few uh, World Cup qualifiers tonight. I see England play San Marino. That shouldn't be too much of a, a problem, should yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you expect that it's going to be how many, really? Yeah. But, I mean, in, you know, it's going to be a tough week for everybody. There are three games. Mm. England have got three games in a week. Um, the clubs are both thinking, you know, they, they, some of these players are at risk. You know, I wouldn't necessarily be playing Harry Kane for the whole 90 minutes. I think, uh, you know, you want players like that to have a little bit left in the tank. So, you know, I think you'll put a strong team out, but hopefully England get enough goals early on that he can uh, rotate a little bit. Yeah, Italy play Northern Ireland. That should be another 4-5. I think the key game to watch tonight, well, for me anyway, will be Scotland-Austria. That Austria is not the worst of sides. No, they're a decent side. And uh, I think... Uh, you know, Scotland got a couple of tough games. Obviously, they yeah. got Austria and then they got Israel. So, uh, you know, but you know, they they've done very well. Scotland, I think they surprised everybody and also got themselves through to the Euros for the yeah. first time in a while. So, I think I think that, that they'll they'll fancy their chances. But uh, Austria, I, I, I like Austria. They're they're not a bad side. Yeah, Steve. On to the international weekend games. We've asked you to preview the first one is Norway Turkey. How do you see that going? Well, before last night, I would have thought, oh, that's, you know, I would have thought Turkey with, uh, sorry, Norway with Haaland would have been a bit strong. Norway um, really struggled last night in Gibraltar. Yeah. I mean, they won. They had a hatful of chances at, uh, against part-timers. It was a huge win for Turkey. Um, and I sort of changed. I think, I think, you know, if they play like that, you know, I could see them holding Norway, uh, yeah. certainly. Yeah, I had a bet. I like to have a bet and watch the game. And I watched the, the Norway-Gibraltar game. They played on an artificial surface that looked like a tennis court. And Haaland kept slipping. But the sad thing is, I think Odegaard got, uh, he, he limped off on half-time. I don't think he's going to be playing here. But uh, I must say, I was really disappointed in Haaland's attitude. He was strolling around. You know, I know he stormed off at Dortmund. Because he got a bit weekend. cocky. He looked a bit cocky, but I just think it was the pitch more than his teammates. But... From what I saw, I watched that whole Turkey Netherlands game. Turkey on a bad side, and uh, I no, think. No, I mean, look, it's interesting. They got their centre back pairing. Yeah, both playing the Liverpool, Premier Leicester Kavak City. Yeah. Play, aren't you? yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, who's Liverpool? The the young guy from look, Stolt. I mean, t- Turkey have always have been very inconsistent, but yeah. uh, you know, they, they've always had players that uh, are capable. So, you know, I, 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 that, I mean, that was a huge result. I think if they get a result in in Norway. They're going to fancy their chances of uh, certainly being in the top two then. Yeah. Serbia, Portugal. Portugal squeaked in last night. They won 1 0. They beat Azerbaijan. That Serbia beat Republic of Ireland. Tough game? Yeah, well, I, mean, I think once uh, Serbia got back in the game, uh, you know, they put up Ireland. And then Mitrovic, I mean, you know, hasn't been scoring for us, uh, comes on as a substitute and gets two tremendous Jeez, goals. The chip was Certainly superb. His first goal was a 30 yards. Keep his eye for you. Tough game. I, I know that Portugal only won one nil, but they had a huge number of chances. Yeah. I think uh, Serb- Serbia—that was a good win for them because they, they have struggled uh, 
in, in, in the Euros. So I, I think I think if Serbia hold Portugal, that would be a decent result for them. Yeah, OK. Now, the team that uh, I forgot that Suchek played last night, he scored a hat-trick, the West Ham. They beat, I think it was Estonia, 6-1 away from home. Yes. They play yeah. a Belgian team. That should be a good game, Steve. It should be, yeah. It finished 6-2, Estonia got, okay. uh, got, a, yeah, got a late right. goal. But, uh, I mean, they're a fairly poor team, Estonia. But it was a big win for, for Czech. I, I would be very surprised, though, if Belgium don't go and win there. I mean, they have such a strong squad, as we yeah. know. You know, virtually, you know, most of the, 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 the Belgian team have, at some point, played in the Premier League. You know, we know their players well. Yeah. You know, although, sort of, Czech have got players like Suchek, I think... Uh, I'd be very surprised if uh, Belgium don't win that. All right. I know they both play tonight, but Israel, Scotland, Steve, tight game? Yeah, I think it will be. I mean, at home, Israel are, are fairly decent. Mm. Um, it will be interesting to see you know, how, how they play tonight. But again, I wouldn't be at all surprised if Scotland you know, capable of getting a draw there, but I don't think they'll, they'll win. Yeah, I remember I had a bet. I backed Scotland to win the Nations League group and they needed to get a result in Israel. They got beat 1-0. They were terrible, yeah. but... Uh, Israel weren't much to look at. Steve, we're going to go on to the League One. I know we spoke about going through them with you. Sure. And we're going to go through game by game. We kick off once our betting comes up with AFC Wimbledon against Northampton. Yeah, I mean, both uh, struggling this, this season. AFC yeah. are having a difficult time, even though they're in there, back in their uh, spiritual home of Plough Lane. Um, Plough Lane. I wouldn't, Lane. Be surprised get, <laughs> Lane. I wouldn't be surprised if they get a result with Wimbledon, but I think it'll be close. Yeah. But Steve, have you, sorry, but Steve, have you been to Plough Lane? Oh, my goodness. It was the first ground uh, I ever went to watch a football match when I was uh, at primary school. Oh. Uh, so you know, I, I used to live about 15 minutes walk away from the old uh, Plough Lane ground. No. So, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I went there many times when they were in the lower leagues. Okay. Yeah, uh, didn't they have that football. video, Steve, of the crazy gang, and they showed them in the change rooms of Plough Lane? What a dugout. Yeah, I mean, what? <laughs> Shocking. Yeah. They gave you cold no, tea. They, they, they were, uh, you know, it's interesting that, uh, you know, they went from sort of nowhere and then sadly uh, got moved out of, uh, of, of their old ground and were pretty much, you know, they've been sort of sharing somebody else's home for many, many years. So um, it's a shame that fans aren't able to get, to, you know, haven't been able to go back in there, which they will next season, hopefully. Yeah, they've got a chance because Northampton away from home haven't won in 12. And also we've got a South African player playing in there. Remember Donovan Chidget, gorgeous? Okay, His gorgeous. grandson, Ethan, plays for Wimbledon. So I've always keep an eye on him. He's a good player. Yeah, Is he a striker? He's a midfield player come striker. Yes, yeah. yes, Ethan yes. Chislett. He's Ethan one of Chislett. our boys. Keep, yeah, keep an eye out. Ethan yeah. Chislett. I played with his father and his son. Yeah. Yeah, I coached his son as well. But uh, anyway, let's hope they can get a result because they're both in relegation trouble. Blackpool, yeah. a team are going well, unbeaten in 12 at home. Too good for Plymouth Argyle? I would think so. I mean, Plymouth have been very up and down, but Blackpool having a very good run got yeah. themselves into a playoff place. So I would be very surprised if Blackpool don't win that. There's right. another question for Steve. Plymouth Argyle, do they play in green? Yes. They do. So yeah. Are they the only club in the four leagues that the first kit is green? Uh, no. Is it uh, Forest, Forest green, green Rovers? Who? Forest Green play green. And what team. league are they in? League two. They got promotion a couple league of weeks two. ago. Oh, OK. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for they that. Play, they play in white green. Yeah, that's okay. correct, yeah. Steve, on to Bristol Rovers. Paul's mate who he went drinking with Dubai's there now, Joey Barton. My man, Joey, he sent me an email after that, yeah. Anyway, he, what's he a coach there? He's taken over Bristol Rovers. He got yeah. fired at Fleetwood. Can you see them upsetting Sunderland? No. Uh, I would be very surprised. I mean, yeah. Sunderland are on a big run at the moment and, yeah. uh, you know, storming up the table and I wouldn't be at all surprised if they carry this on, that they're going to get very close to being in that top two at the end of the oh, season. I hope so, because so, Sunderland um, till I, I die. Yeah. They're big, you know, it would be a surprise if Bristol Rovers do anything other than, uh, you know, might scrape a draw, but I think, you know, Sunderland just, you know, looking at their results in, in the last couple of months, they're, yeah. you know, they're tight games, but they just seem to do enough to, to win. Yeah, the league needs Sunderland back. Okay. Great stadium. Another team that's cruising at the top, Hull City against Gillingham. How do you see that, Steve? Yeah, I think Hull, I mean, Gillingham having a decent run at the moment, yeah. Hull, uh, Hull have been playing well and uh, obviously uh, sitting sitting at the top. I think I'd be a surprise if Hull don't win that. All right, now one team, when you look at the league logs, you'd never say that MK Dons are favourites. They're 13th, Doncaster are 5th. Would you be taking 11 at 10, the MK Dons, Steve? 
Well, uh, yeah, I, not, I haven't given them great odds, but MK Dons are, are having a good run at the moment. They sort of turned it round, won a few, three in a row. Yeah. Uh, Doncaster haven't uh, been struggling of late. I, I fancy MK Dons there. Okay. Peterborough. The posh, aren't they up there? The posh are up there. The posh second. Yeah, they're just, I think, a point or two above Sunderland. Now, Peterborough at home against Accrington Stanley. Stanley Accrington. How do you see yeah, that, Steve? Peterborough have, have um, had a bit of an inconsistent run recently, but they should be too strong. Uh, they, they should definitely be too strong for uh, Accrington. But again, Accrington's not a bad side, but yeah. uh, I'd expect Peterborough to win that. Yeah, I just had a look. They've won five, lost one of the last game, lost six at didn't, home. Didn't, the only didn't, team... Didn't young Ferguson trained there at some stage? Uh, Peterborough, yes, yeah. his mate. And Accrington... Yeah, Stan yeah, Shane Warne played cricket for Accrington Stanley. Can you believe it? Stanley the photo. Accrington. Yeah. Accrington. Steve, uh, Portsmouth, I see Danny Cowley has taken over Portsmouth. One game, they've got a result. Do you think they can go to Shrewsbury and win? Yeah, I think it'd be a tight game. I mean, obviously, they had a difficult run and, and lost a few before that. Yeah. Shrewsbury um, have, have, have actually unbeaten in a few. I wouldn't yeah. be at all surprised if uh, they at least hold and maybe even win that Shrewsbury. They, they've just sort of picked up of late. Uh, so, you know, there's some good odds. You know, for, for the home team, I think there's decent odds there. Yeah, I know. I back Burton Albion, Jimmy Floyd, Hasselbank's team in midweek. They're at home at Shrewsbury. <laughs> they got beat 2-1. Jimmy so no, Floyd. The, Jimmy Floyd's back at Burton. Yeah. That's, that's also he well. should be an Ashburn. Yeah. Apart, apart from that result, Burton have had a tremendous run, got themselves out of the relegation zone. Yeah. So. Didn't help me on Tuesday, though. No. <laughs> During the relegation, <laughs> relegation zone. <laughs> relegation zone with my bank manager. And last but not least, uh, Ipswich Town, who are managed now under Paul Cook. He was the guy that revolutionised Wigan. How do you see yeah, that going, right. Steve? So he's going uh, home. I think it'll be a I think it'll be a close game. I mean, Ipswich, uh, you know, really should have been doing much better this year. Yeah. I mean, they, they've struggled a bit, but I wouldn't be surprised, you know, I think Ipswich will I mean, maybe get a draw, maybe win that one. All right, you're going Ipswich. All right, Steve, pressure time again. Best need bet. your best bet and your best value bet, please. Yeah, I'm going to, yeah, maybe a little bit contentious. I'm going to go for MK Dons. I think they've turned it around and they're looking quite good the last few weeks. Okay. And my value bet, I'm going to go for Shrewsbury Town. Okay. I think that they might uh, pull off a bit of a surprise. Taming of the shrews, Shrewsbury Town. Excellent, excellent, Stevie. Steve, thank you very much. Just remember, last one standing starts next weekend, so you've yeah. got plenty of time to pick Chelsea. No, so, it'll be uh, good to... Uh, you know, this is you know starting next weekend is the run-in for the season. Obviously, there's only sort of eight, nine games nine left. Nine games, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah so it's so all getting very exciting, Stevie. It is. I think a lot of uh, managers are getting very concerned that their big name players are having to play three games in yeah. the next week. Um, you know, and obviously, you know, we already heard about one or two injuries last night. So uh, let's hope that uh, you know. I mean, for us, it's cr critical that none of our players get injured because we. Stevie, got how money. many how many Fulman boys are out internationally? Uh, quite a few, actually. Obviously, different clubs. You know, I mean, we've got people like. Anthony Robinson, you know, playing for the US, has yes. you know, travelled over there. So, you know, it's the ones who are having to travel quite a distance. They, yeah. they come back and they've only got a few days to get themselves ready for the weekend, so a couple yeah. of days. So, well, it's, uh, you know, it's, I think this, it is a critical time, and I think clubs that lose players in the next week, um, it's, uh, it is very disruptive. But, you know, with, 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 we have such a congested schedule at the moment yeah. uh, that having to fit in three World Cup games in one week. You know, make... Normally, you wouldn't play more than two. Yeah. We'll see. All right. Tough up. You had a COVID break. Steve. All right, Stevie. Yeah. Wonderful talking to you. Stay well. All see the best, Steve. Steve. Bye. Bye. All right. There you <coughs> are. Stevie B, a font of information. <laughs> Let's go World Cup qualifiers, Bert. Yeah, I need your opinion on a few. Some look straightforward. Some look a bit more darcy. Yeah. But uh, it should be up on our screen. We started with Russia, Slovenia. Paul, Russia, Slovenia. seven to ten. Yeah, Paul, I watched Slovenia beat uh, Croatia last night. I tried to get a bet on, but I couldn't get a bet on in play. I wanted to back Croatia to equalise. They never. <laughs> Slovenia have got Jan Oblik, hard-working team. Be a close game, Paul, but obviously Russia at home. Yeah. The Norwegians against the Turkish. Well, I'm disappointed what I saw with Norwegian, with Norway. And with that, Odegaard... You were I disappointed with Holland, you said earlier. Yeah. What, just the attitude, you know, he was slipping, Casual. Paul. He had the wrong boots on, that's what it looked like. Oh. And he just kept he slipping. He had the tin man six studs from Richie Michael. <laughs> and he was playing on uh, a carpet. That was, carpet, a, yeah. you know. So you still allow those fields, Butch? 
Yeah, and played, this is an international, and you're yeah. playing off for that. Astrid Turf, we looked terrible, Paul, yeah. really looked bad. Didn't but we have I, one in England many years back? Yeah, well, and Preston had one, Luton had one as well. Yes, Luton and, were the and first. they stopped that. Okay. So, yeah. so, but bottom line, you go for Turkey. Turkey. Okay, let's see. <coughs> Serbia, me. Portugal. Portugal 8 to 10 away yeah. from home. Is, is Ronaldo playing all yeah, these games? Yeah, he played last night. Okay. You know, Paul, I was going to be all over Serbia until I watched them beat the Republic of Ireland, but they were hanging on at the end. Yeah. And the exotics, I had to do it yesterday lunchtime, so I put all three. I like Portugal, Paul. I think they'll have too much for Serbia. Yeah. Republic of Ireland with Paul, Carl Lafferty up yeah. front. No, no, that, no, that's Northern Ireland. Sorry, Northern Republic Ireland. Republic of Ireland. He's Conley. We had a guy from Preston playing, Alan Brown in the middle of the park. Really disappointed him, Paul, but they haven't got many players. Luxembourg aren't the greatest, but... Five to ten, You Republic. can't take five to ten, Paul, but in exotics, so, you know, obviously you're limited to your spend, yeah. but I don't trust them, Paul. Not what I've would seen. you take six to ten Belgium? Yes, I would. You know, I just think, Paul, they, they got a full they're squad. going to, you know, De Bruyne, when he plays, they've got plenty of players, Paul. Is Hazard back? Uh, no, his brother scored last night with a header. Torgan, they've got players, Dries Mertens, they've got players. The boy from Leicester, does he get a run? He played Tielemans, yeah. Tielemans, he's a good player. Good player, right? Paul, yeah. They've got some very good players. Have they got those big strikers? And Lukaku played last night, he scored a penalty. But uh, uh, Bishwai was there. Did the Spurs in half get a run? Uh, Oliverald? Oliverald was there, yeah. Vertonghen, Vermaelen, they were all there. Carrasco. Okay. Now they've got plenty of players. Paul. Plenty of quality. Okay, let's move on. Now, Angeland at 3 to 10 must yeah. be a certainty. Paul, unfortunately, there's all these teams play tonight. So we're limited, you know, what we could do. But England's got to beat Albania, Paul. Only word in the English language is starts with Ian Jean is pronounced Ing. You know, <laughs> Danny <laughs> Ings? Oh, yeah. Yeah, England. It should be England or something. But anyway. England, yeah. Angleterre or yeah. 3 to 10. Yeah. Let's have a look at Kosovo. 5 to 1 to well, be 3. Zlatan's back for uh, Sweden. Once they announced he was in the team, they went from 8 to 10 to 6 to 10. Kosovo, you know, they'll try, Paul, but if Sweden, they've got all their players, they should be too good. Okay, next one, Budge. I like the Ukraine, Paul. I watched a little bit of them against France last night. That Zinchenko that plays left back for Man City, he plays a little bit more of an advanced player for Ukraine. That's Shevchenko's team, Paul. They can play. Obviously, yeah. France outplayed them, but, you know, Timo Puke scored a game last night. They drew 2-2 with Bosnia, Herzegovina. Who, for I Finland? Like, yeah, I like Ukraine, Paul. I like what okay. I saw. Okay. Israel, Scotland. Paul, I watched the Nations League game. How's Israel the betting there, Bunch? How's the betting? Oh, that's how it should be, Paul. 17 to 10, 22, 70 to 10. Paul, if I was having a bet, it would be the draw. Okay. But uh, I do think there'll be goals because the second game, and they've both got to win games, Paul. They can't just sit back and hope. Yeah, correct. And now so Germany, good... Germany are 4 to 10, Bunch. Is oh. the same guy in charge? Yeah, Joachim Lowe. This is his last competition. They've got that's them right. all, the Werners and all the... Most of the Bayern Munich players are in the squad, Paul. World Cup, they don't make too many mistakes. The Euros, you can always squeak in, but I think Germany aimers. Okay, so uh, that's, that's the lot yeah, Paul, we had to highlight some of the teams are 1 to 25, so it was pointless putting them up. Yeah. Right? Okay, well, look at this. Is, now, this is. Uh, Paul, this game's on. We're going this yesterday, is a, this today. This is in Africa. It's CAF, yeah. We've got these are our AFCON qualifiers, Paul. You know, we spoke about South Africa, we play tonight. The, the, a lot of the odds weren't out for Sunday because teams were playing yeah, last yeah. night tonight. So they don't really like bringing them early. But these are the Friday are you, games. Are you telling me Cameroon are 26 to 10 against Cape Verde? Yep. You know, the thing is, Paul, Cameroon have already qualified. That's the problem. And Cape Verde on the islands, they play on the blue astroturf. You can't believe it. The sharks, as they call them. But uh, Cameroon already threw, Paul. So uh, Cape Verde are desperate. They've had a, a poor, they've drawn all four of their games. I think that's the only reason why. And unfortunately, we don't know the players, what's going to be. But for me, I think the draw at 19 to 10, especially as Cameroon are more than likely play the younger players, seeing they're already through. Senegal, 8 to 10. Yeah, fancy Senegal, Paul. They are, yeah, but likewise, is Mane and those guys going to be in the team? If it is, 8 to 10 is a certainty, even though yeah. they've already qualified. Okay, so, Ivory Coast is 7 yeah, to 10. Paul, now they've got to win. You know, they're oh. second in the group. Niger are struggling, they're fourth. So you'd think Ivory Coast with the desperations, Paul, 7 to 10. They're not in my bets because it's on Friday, but you'd think they should win. Morocco, 8 to 10? Well, Morocco already qualified, Paul. Mauritania, I think that's sent to the Kalahari Desert. They beat South Africa there a couple of years ago. Likewise, not Morocco surprising. already through. So uh, the draws are player, but I like Morocco, Paul. Good team. Benin, 26 to 10, 14 to Nigeria. Paul, Nigeria. Nigeria must be certainty. Paul, they need a point. That's the only problem. And you never know with Nigeria. Yeah. But that's a Saturday game. I think it'll be on. 
So depending on the team, wait and have a look who's in the side. Because that's Ian Acho and all those guys. They've Be got good a good player. team. For if that's their main team playing, 14 to 10 looks a gift, but you never know with Nigeria. But I just want to touch on a few... Uh Bufana, let's do Bufana in front of fixtures. Uh, Thursday, they play Ghana. We play at uh, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock tonight, Paul. And on Sunday, we play Sudan. Yeah, the thing is, we've all got nine points. South Africa, Ghana, and Sudan. Now, we've got a game in hand. Our game in hand's Ghana tonight. Now, if we don't get a result, if we say we get beat, we've got to go to Sudan on Sunday away. The only thing in our favour is we beat them at home. So the head-to-head -head record is OK, but... Uh, We've got to get at least a point tonight. If we get a point tonight, it'll put us in a good... If we win tonight, we're through. Yeah, because if we draw tonight, we just have to draw Because then it's head-to-heads and then we'll be, we'll be fine. But uh, big game tonight, Paul. But you know Ghana, they've got players. Just uh, the, the Thursday, the uh, World Cup qualifiers, England on the box, 9.45. Yeah, the, a, lot of the, a lot of the all will be five or six of them on tonight, Paul. They were all on last night, especially the 21 45, the quarter to 10 games. They were all on. I see know. Germany are playing Iceland. Are they the boys who do the slap the yeah. wrong way around? Iceland, yeah. they, they, they well, they've got all it. their players, Paul, in the, in the Nations League and the Euros. They had with COVID that most of the English players didn't go. You know, Good Johnson, I think it's Artisan, those guys didn't turn up, and the guy from uh, Burnley didn't go. But with the World Cups, Paul, this means everything to them, so they're all there now. Any other game group you tonight, but No, nah, Paul. Nothing, just, uh, you, I can't watch mismatches. Yeah, Paul. that's what I thought. Okay, let's go and look at our pools, Budge. Let's go look at the pools. See what we've yeah. got. So, tell me your thinking on these sixes. Yeah, Paul, uh, we kick off with a gold circle, Paul. Uh, I've thrown the draw in with Russia against Slovenia. I think Croatia are desperate to get back. They'll be too good for Cyprus. I think the Dutch will be too good for Latvia. I've gone the field in the Norway-Turkey game. I fancy Belgium to beat the Czech Republic. And I've gone the field in the Portugal-Serbia match, Paul. What I saw I don't, last night, I don't see Portugal losing, but I'm looking for the upset, 108 okay. rand. All right. The second one is the Pumalela one. It includes the League One teams. I've gone Russia, win and draw at home against Slovenia. I've gone the field in the AFC Wimbledon Northampton town game. I'm banking Blackpool to beat Plymouth Argyle. Hull City to be too good for Gillingham. I'm going Leighton Orient, win and draw at home against Oldham. And I'm going the field in the Wigan Ipswich town fixture, 2 1 6. OK, let's look at the 10. Yeah, on to our 10, which is our gold circle one. I've gone Belarus, win and draw at home against Estonia. I've banked Montenegro to beat Gibraltar. I don't see Russia losing at home to Slovenia. I'm bankering Croatia to beat Cyprus, as well as Netherlands to beat Latvia. On to our second page, I'm going the field in the Norway versus Turkey match. I'm going for Belgium to win in the Czech Republic. I've thrown the draw and looking for an upset with the Republic of Ireland and Luxembourg. I'm looking for another upset with Serbia in, in Portugal match, and I'm banking Slovakia to be too good at home for Malta, 144. Okay. On to our Soccer 13 that came Thursday morning, and there's a lot of under-21 games in there, Paul. So we started off, I'm going Turkey, win and draw in Norway. I don't see Portugal losing in Serbia. I'm bankering Belgium to beat the Czech Republic. I'm bankering Republic of Ireland due to financial constraints to be too good for Luxembourg. I'm going Germany under-21 to avoid defeat against the Netherlands. I don't see Spain under-21 losing to Italy. I'm going the Czech Republic, win and draw in Slovenia. On to our second page, I'm going Romania under 21 to avoid defeat against Hungary. I'm bankering Sweden to beat Kosovo, Italy to beat Bulgaria, Finland, uh, sorry, the Ukraine to beat Finland. I'm going Scotland, win and draw in Israel, and ending with England to be too good in Albania. 2.56. Okie dokie. Let's go to your best bet. Bunch. Oh, Paul, on to, so unfortunately, we're limited with what we can do, but the first one's a handicap quartet. I'm going Belgium, Germany, Italy, and Spain, all to win by more than one goal. So okay. they've got to win by two or more. 13 to 1, 2,600 to 200. I'm going the, the World Cup team only goals. I'm going Belgium to score over one and a half goals against the Czech Republic. And I'm going Croatia, England, France and Spain, all to score over two and a half goals against their opponents. 24 to 1, 4,800 to 200. Okay. Our World Cup, both teams to score sides are Norway, Turkey, Serbia, Portugal, Ireland, Luxembourg and Israel, Scotland. Two and a half thousand to 200. On to our League One, I'm going Blackpool and Sunderland to win. 
and over one and a half total goals in each game. And I'm going Hull City. But better, you're not straight. You've straightened them eight times while I've been watching. You. No, no. Are they straight? Yep, they're straight. Yeah, and I'm going Hull City to beat Gillingham and both teams to score no. So Hull City have to keep a clean sheet. I thought that was a great bit. It was 16 to 10. They haven't conceded at home in the last three. Gillingham was struggling, so I had to take a chance. So that's the one I've gone on. Okay. 2,300 to 200. Okay. I lead one, both teams to score sides are ASC Wimbledon, Northampton, Peterborough, Accrington, Stanley, Shrewsbury, Portsmouth, and Wigan, Ipswich Town. Same price, 2,300 to 200. And our Collis King, Collis six King. or Nexa. I'm going Blackpool to beat Plymouth Argyle. Hull City to beat Gillingham, Belgium to beat the Czech Republic, Germany to beat Romania, Italy to beat Bulgaria, and Spain to be too good for Georgia. 10 to 1, 2,200 is our play. There we go, Budge. That's very good. I like some of those bets. I think you're in with the, in with the shaft there. Yeah, Paul, it's always money. tricky. Yeah, my best bet for the weekend is Iceland. They play away in Armenia on Sunday. Iceland play Germany tonight. I don't know how strong a team they're going to feel because they've got two other games that are more crucial than the German. I don't see them upsetting the Germans. So many are struggling. Henrik Mkhitaryan's not available, according to reports. So I'm taking 12 to 10 ice in my best bet on Sunday. Okay, Budge. Don't forget, there's no uh, last one standing this weekend. It's all international football. But on the third, the new one starts and those last 20 are fighting it out. Until next time, stay on side.